Even if I don't have a quirk, can I become a hero? Can someone without a quirk be like you? Hello and welcome to another Hot Rockstar Review. Today I'll be reviewing the first season of the popular anime series My Hero Academia. The first season adapts the first four arcs of the manga, the Hero Entrance Exam arc, the Quirk Apprehension Test arc, the Battle Trial arc, and the Unforeseen Simulation Joint arc, or USJ for short. This is actually one of the first seasonal anime I have ever watched, and it was very interesting to say the least. This is the story of a quirkless kid named Izuku Midoriya, who is in a world filled with people with quirks. Quirks are genetic mutations that basically give superpowers to 80% of the population. Midoriya wants to help people and be a hero, but since he has no quirk, he can't compete with the rest of the world. But luckily for Midoriya, he was given the honor of inheriting a quirk from the number one hero, All Might. With his new quirk, One For All, he does his best to learn how he can become a hero who can replace the symbol of peace. I really liked Izuku Midoriya's story. At the beginning, it was very clear to me that he was lying to himself. It seemed like he had given up on becoming a hero because he was quirkless, yet continued to verbally tell himself that he could do it. If he truly believed he could become a hero without a quirk, he wouldn't have needed other people to validate his dream. We constantly saw that he wanted validation from his friends, mother, and even All Might. I really liked that because I had never seen an anime protagonist who had given up internally like he had. It just made the story a bit more interesting and it made me feel a bit sorry for him too. The beginning of the show captures the feeling of hopelessness and desperation really well. When All Might told Midoriya that he could be a hero, I felt a feeling of hope and I was able to completely understand why he would cry in the middle of the street like he did. His training montage after that was very reminiscent to the training montages in Rocky. At that point, I was rooting for him to get better and improve himself so he can be the best hero he could be. After receiving All Might's quirk, I noticed that Midoriya's goal had changed. Initially, he just wanted to be a hero who could save everyone. Now he wants to be the number one hero and the symbol of peace to replace All Might. I didn't completely notice this on my first watch, but when I went over it again, it is clear that his ambitions had changed. Another thing that makes this anime a bit more unique is that we get to hear Midoriya's thought process. I'm not saying that other shonen anime don't show the protagonist's thoughts, but in My Hero Academia, we hear Midoriya's thoughts constantly. This allows the audience to have insight on Midoriya's place in the world. And since he is a hero fanboy, we get to see what he thinks about other heroes. And not to mention, we get to learn about other heroes' strengths and weaknesses. It just gives the audience a greater understanding of the world, and it gives an explanation as to how Midoriya was able to fight Bakugo so well without using his quirk. I also really liked that in the last arc of this season, Midoriya had a minor role to play in comparison to the pro heroes. We get to focus on his small accomplishments while also witnessing how the pros at the top fight. Another reason why I like the USJ arc is because we got to see Midoriya in a leadership role. When he was with Sue and Mineta, he was able to come up with a plan to incapacitate the minor water-based villain. It is great that not only do we see Midoriya lead others, but we also see him work with other people this season rather than take on the main villain by himself. And even though he didn't fight the main villains, he had important moments in that arc like saving All Might's life for instance. This show has some amazing characters, especially in Class 1A. We get some brief introductions to most of these characters during Aizawa's quirk test, but there are a few characters who get more attention this season like Su, Ida, Uraka, Todoroki, Bakugo, and Mineta. Obviously, all characters didn't get development because there were only 13 episodes in this season, but this season showed enough of the other characters to make me curious about them. I know that My Hero Academia will give these characters more development in later seasons, and I am excited to see it. But for my favorite character right now, it is a mix between Midoriya, Bakugo, and All Might. I already talked a bit about Midoriya, so I'll first talk about Bakugo. <laughs> I really didn't like him in the first few episodes when I watched this show. He just seemed like a bully who picked on Midoriya, so I hated him right away. However, the further I got into the season, the more I realized that he was more than just a bully. He is extremely smart, and he learned how to use his quirk really well. I really get the sense that even though he was born with a powerful quirk, 
he still put in the work to master and use it in creative ways. After this season finished, it was clear to me that even though Bakugo bullied Midoriya, he still does care about him. Now I believe Bakugo was only bullying Midoriya so hard because he knew that even with an amazing quirk like his, it would take a lot of work to become a hero. I think that Bakugo also knew that Midoriya had already given up internally, and he didn't want to see him hurt himself chasing an unobtainable dream. I just love Bakugo as he seems to be a pretty complex character and he brings some humor into the series. Next, I also really liked All Might. When he was first introduced, he reminded me of Superman, and since Superman is one of my favorite superheroes, I took a liking to All Might instantly. Him being a hero who could only be active for a few hours a day was also an interesting twist that I wasn't expecting. He is overall just a really cool mentor who brings some more humor into the show. All Might is also in my favorite fight scene of this season. I love this battle against the Nomu because that is where we really get to see the strength it takes to be the number one hero. It was cool to see since Midoriya has the same power as All Might, though one day he'll definitely be able to fight at that level. It's also just really nice to see how much stronger the strongest hero is than the protagonist. Midoriya definitely has a long way to go, but I believe that he will be able to go beyond plus ultra. Not to mention the animation during that team was amazing. My mouth was literally open wide when I watched it. Studio Bones really did their thing for the fight scenes, especially those in which either Midoriya or All Might use one for all. And I just want to quickly mention that I love the music in this series. The opening of this season, The Day by Prona Graffiti, always got me hyped and I never skipped it. Not even once. The OSTs and ending theme were also very great. My personal favorite is the main theme song, You Say Run. It's just very powerful and whenever that song played, you knew something awesome was going to happen. The only criticism that I have for the first season is that some of the world building falls a bit flat for me. I think that the show explains quirks really well, and I think that it uses quirks in ways that even I wouldn't think about. For example, Mineta's pop-off quirk seemed useless to me, but the show was very creative with how Mineta uses that quirk. However, sometimes the show isn't always as creative with quirk usage like it was with Mineta. An example that comes to mind is Mountain Lady. At the beginning of the season, she said that she couldn't save Bakugo because she needed at least two lanes to do hero duties since she is so giant. I know that she probably can't variate between her normal height and her giant height, but she does grow to reach that size. So if she grows from 162 centimeters to 2062 centimeters, then she has to have been all those heights in between those two to get there. Kind of like the intermediate value theorem in math, where if a function is continuous and f of a is negative and f of b is positive, then the function must have passed through zero at least once at some point. Just a little math lesson for you there. The point is that she could have used her powers in a way in which she grows to a giant size, and then she attacks while she is growing. And then before she is at full size, she can jump onto a safe street. I guess a counter argument could be that she probably isn't willing to put that much effort into being a hero, and it's more of a personality flaw. And I may have been able to accept that when I first watched this show. But the more we see how people train to use their quirks the most effectively, the less believable that idea becomes. And this is only one instance of an underutilized quirks. There are a few more in this season alone. Also, when I look at Class 1A, I get confused because I honestly don't know how some of them would be able to even qualify the entrance exam. Like, how was that invisible girl able to pass the entrance exam? To my knowledge, she doesn't have any special abilities that can help her beat those giant robots. It is just something that I believe is never going to get explained, and that bugs me a little bit. I know that this is very nitpicky, but it did break my immersion a bit, so I wanted to mention it. Overall, My Hero Academia has one of the most intriguing first seasons that I have ever seen. From this season alone, I am not only interested in the protagonist, but I am also interested in the class of 1A side characters and how they will develop in the future. With the first season like this, it is no wonder as to why My Hero Academia is so popular today. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to leave a like and Detroit smash that subscribe button to see more My Hero Academia content on this channel. And be sure to hit that bell to get notified of every new video I release on the channel. And feel free to comment your thoughts on the My Hero Academia series. I'll see you in the next life. Peace out.